بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا ومرحبا Welcome, welcome. My name is Sean Mukhtar and I am coming to you live from Santa Monica Islamic Center in Santa Monica, California. This is our yearly Tri-Valley Maulid, Alhamdulillah. This is a year unlike any we have ever experienced before. This is a year unlike any we have ever experienced before with social distancing and this pandemic. But that will not stop us from celebrating our Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, tonight we have a very beautiful program lined up for you all, Inshallah. We will start with the recitation of the Quran, and then we will go forward with Adhkar, Dikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then after that, Inshallah, we will have a talk by our scholar, Sheikh Talib Arabi. And then after that, we will have more inshad, more talks by various scholars. We have tonight with us Sheikh Faraz Khan, Dr. Ali Atai, Qari Amar Abdullah, and the Bay Area Munshideen, Omer Khan Qadri, Sidi Mahdi Amin, and Hatim Yasin. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we ask you all to make intention, intention to praise our Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherever you are. Wherever you are, any part of the world, inshallah, this moment will be widespread, widespread, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we will start with the citation of the Holy Quran. Listen. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وَإِذْ قَالَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ رَبِّ جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ وَارْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ مَنْ آمَنَ مِنْهُمْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ قَالَ وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا ثُمَّ أَضْ طره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا وجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا ربنا وبعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة 
ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله الكريم ونحن على ذلك إن شاء الله من الشاهدين كل القلوب إلى الحبيب تميل كل القلوب إلى الحبيب تميل ونعي بهذا ونعي بهذا شاهد ودليل أما الدليل إذا ما ذكرت محمدا أما الدليل إذا ما ذكرت محمدا فترى دموع العاشقين تسيل هذا مقالي فيك يا أحسن الورى هذا مقالي فيك يا أحسن الورى ومدحي فيك يا رسول الله قليل هذا الهاشمي هذا المصطفى هذا الهاشمي هذا المصطفى صلى عليه الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله عدد كمال الله وكما يليق بكماله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نور الهدى محمد وعلى آله عدد كمال الله وكما يليق بكماله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله عدد كمال الله وكما يليق بكماله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلى الله عليه Just to start, inshallah, by applying the verse, wa rafa'na laka dhikrak, wa do sham sarwat al Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a'udhu lillahi wa shaitan al-rajim, inna Allah wa alayhi wa sallam wa ala al-nabi, ya ayu ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallim wa taslima, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وآله وسلم 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 اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا Bismillah, inshallah, before we begin with our first lecture, we're going to have a quick nasheed, inshallah, a quick nasheed in praise of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you have the mode of the book with you, you can open it up to page 173, 173. نحن في روضات الرسول حضور طالبين الرضا وحسن قبول الله 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 يا مولانا الله 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 بفضلك كل جنا يا خير من إليه الملال بانكسار وذلة ودهول الله 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 يا مولانا الله 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 بفضلك كل فاسأل الله فينا كل عناية لنا نيامنا بوقف الحلول الله 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 يا مولانا الله 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 بفضلك كل لك قدر عظيم ليس يضاهى ورسالة تقوم كل رسول الله 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 يا مولانا الله 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 بفضلك كل أنت باب الإله في كل خير من أتى فاجع بالرضا والوصول الله 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 يا مولانا الله 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 بفضلك كل كل سر في الأنبياء قد أتاهم علاكم مؤيدا بنقول الله 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 يا مولانا الله الله بفضلك كل قد تشفعت في امور الهي 
Bismillah, Bismillah. For those of you who are joining us now online, Ahlam wa Sahlam, Ahlam wa Sahlam, welcome to the 
and you will try value molded. Welcome, welcome. This is a year unlike any we have ever seen before, but we're not going to let that stop us from celebrating our Habib al Adam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have an amazing program lined up for you tonight, inshallah. My name is Sean Mukhtar. I am your MC for tonight, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, our next speaker, our first speaker of the night, is our local scholar, our local ustad, Sheikh Tarif Arabi. May Allah bless him and increase him and protect his family. Sheikh Tarif Arabi was born and raised in Syria, Damascus, where he studied with some of the foremost scholars of our time there, such as Sheikh Abdurrahman al Shaburi, Sheikh Ramadan Bayouti, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And now we're going to have him have the, give us a little talk, inshallah. Bismillah. Amazing night to gather together and with all the Ahbab online to celebrate the best of creation. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they asked him, he was fasting on Monday. He said, why you are fasting on Monday? He said, this is a day I was born in. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who was celebrating every Monday, his, his, his moment. Because he knew, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what happened when he was born. Because Allah said, that we send you as rahma lil'alim. It's a mercy for all creation, not only for human being, not only for jinn, not only for this earth, it's for all the alameen. And the alameen is everything except Allah SWT. And all the creation is alameen. So then, alam al-mulk wa al-malakut wa al-jabarut, all these thrones are alameen. And he is rahma to all of them. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us about yourself. Sahih Hadith narrates, he said, tell us about yourself. He said, I'm a da'wah to Abi Ibrahim. He said, I'm the answer of the call of my father Ibrahim. Alayhi salatu salam. As Shaykh Atif read in the Quran, the verse of the Ustazim, Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasoolan minhum. Send amongst them a messenger. Yathu alayhim ayati. They, he recites your verses, your word. الكتاب, and teach them the book, the Quran, and the wisdom. And the wisdom is that his way, وسلم, the Sunnah. And then purify them. He says to Rasulullah, وسلم, I'm the answer of the call of Ibrahim. When Sayyidina Ibrahim was raising the, 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 the basis of the Kaaba, he made this dua. And Allah answered his dua. And he brought our Habib So when he said, said, when they said, tell us about yourself, he said, I'm the answer of the call of my father Ibrahim. Musa, uh, Isa. He said, I'm the good news that my brother Isa gave. As Allah said in the Quran, وَإِذْ Isa بِنْ مَرْيَمْ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ Oh! People of Bani Israel, I'm the message from Allah to you. I confirm all the Old Testament that came to you. And I'm giving you good news that the one you're waiting, all of us, is coming. His name is Ahmed. So he is giving us good news. So Muhammad said, I'm the answer of the Quran Ibrahim and the good news of that Isa gave. And then my mother saw when I was born a light. You have to know that the, 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 the birth happened before Fajr and it was darkness. And then she saw a light. From that light, the castle of Sham was shown. So it's like <laughs> from Mecca to all the way to Milad al-Sham. And he said, this, that, this is, this, he's talking about himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he will not say this unless, because he was asked. He doesn't want to like show off and say, I'm, I'm, because they asked him, he answered, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, what's happened 
that this rahmah that reach everybody. Al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to us as Allah told him. And Rasulullah sallam delivered this to us, and he told the Sahaba, "Ana hafdukum min al dunya wa antum hafdhi min al umma. Ana hafdukum min al anbiya wa antum hafdhi min al umma. I am your portion. I am your luck. I am your share from from all the prophets." And you are my share from Allah, from amongst all nations. It's like I'm your gift and you're my gift. So Rasulullah wanted to take a good care of his gift, us, all of us. And that's why he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ummati, my Ummah, my. Ummati, Ummatul Marhuma, my nation, my Ummah, is a nation of mercy. Allah made their punishment. He said, there's no punishment on them and the day of judgment. Their punishment in this dunya. And he says, Their punishment in the dunya by problems amongst themselves, fitna, and by earthquake, and by killing each other. And that's the punishment in the dunya. Now, we've seen some people who really they criticize, saying, what's happening with the Muslims around the world? Why they are in this position? They didn't know that this is a, the sign of the mercy, Rahman al that he converted the adab from the Akhirah, which is a day. There is a day of 50,000 years of, of, of a punishment that nothing can help you except if you come to Allah with a heart that is pure. Salim. But Rasulullah he said, instead of this 50,000 tears of, of a pain, you're going to have, if you go away from my message, if you go away from my way, then the punishment on earth. So that's a rahmah that's coming. And if you really want to understand this, you, you compare this to the how was the tawbah before our deen, before previous Ahlul Bukh Kitab? Their tawbah is, one type of the tawbah is just to kill themselves. Our tawbah, our, our rahmah is from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, as Allah said in the Quran, that day, the only thing that benefits you is a qalb salim. So how, who have this qalb salim? Who have this pure heart? Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, when he opened the chest of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and took his, his heart and he said, qalbun wakir fiha aynani tubsiran wa fi idhnai tisna'an. Amazing, powerful, pure heart. In it, there is two eyes that see things. There is two ears that hear things. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he pointed to his heart, he said, the people of Ma'rifa, they said, all oh, the taqwa and all oh, the, the, the thing that Allah is pleased with it is in the heart of Rasulullah. And for us to gain and to come close to Allah is to come close to that heart. Because he's our model. That's why Rasulullah said to say, Namar, your belief is not there if you don't believe, if you don't love me more than your family and yourself and your money and everything. And when Sayyidina Umar, toward the end, he calibrated himself, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I love you more than myself. He said, al Ya Umar, now. So if we connected our heart to the heart of the best of creation, then we will be Applying ourselves, what Allah said in the Quran, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ And that connection can happen through three things. Number one is doing salawat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Allah of the Rasul. That Allah and the angel doing salawat of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we are all invited to join that. Number two is longing to him and loving him. Longing to him and loving him. That love will take you 
in a place where our action cannot reach. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi said, "Al-Mar'u ma'man ahab." You be with the one you love. Number three is knowing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or his character, and that can be done. As Sayyidah Aisha said, "Tala khuluq al-Qur'an." So if you recite Qur'an and go through the depth of the Qur'an, you're knowing Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you know the Sirah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know the Qur'an. And by this, you increase your hub. As I said, we, he is our hub, is our portion, he was our luck. We need to increase our hub. He already, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he already increased his hub. He, one night he was, making dua and crying all night. And Allah said, Sayyidina Jibreel, what do you want? He said, my ummah. And the Rasulullah kept getting. He said, told the Sahaba, you will be one third of the Jannah. And then Allah increased it. You will be one half of the Jannah, Allah increased it. And toward that he said, you will be two thirds of, of Jannah. People of inter Jannah will be two thirds of all human beings. As Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, people to inter Jannah, they are 120 rows. 80 of them, they are, from this ummah, from this ummah. So this celebration of the birth of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, all of us, we know that this body is made for this dunya. And the thing that came from Allah is the soul that made this body alive. But the moment the body is done, then the soul will leave, go back to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But there is one body that became better than all the bodies and became the body better than all the souls which is, the body was at the, this month in Rabia, when the soul of Allah joined his body, and now his body became higher than all creation. That's why it's the only body that would allow to go beyond Sidrat al Muntaha, beyond everything to be with the Hadar of Allah SWT. Went through all the seven heavens, with the Isra and the Mi'raj, and everything, and bypass, Jannah bypass, lottery, and then, so that body is the body that Allah raised above everything. We are enjoying this moment. This moment where earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hated earth, and then when he, Rasulullah was born, it, it flipped completely. Because Allah Rasulullah said, The best of time on earth is my time, and then the one after, the one after. The generation after, the generation after. That's why wherever he goes, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it became paradise. The city with diseases came Medina Munawwara. The place where he walks, it became Rawdal of, of paradise. They say the soil that touching his body now is more holy than everything on earth. Everything on, you know, everything more than holy than the Kaaba, more holy than the seven heavens, more holy than the Kursi and the Hash. So we are lucky to be part of this ummah when he said, Ummati, mine. So all of us, inshallah, will increase our hub of Rasulullah by the salawat and the love and the Quran. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Barakallahu alaykum. Jazakum ala khairan ala tarif. Jazakum ala khairan ala tarif. Inshallah, we will be able to practice what was preached today. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Before our next speaker, inshallah, we're going to have a knot in Urdu, inshallah, praising our beloved yeah. Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah, Habib. Yeah. Yeah. صلى الله عليك يا يا رسول الله وسلم عليك يا حبيب الله. This is a good one, inshallah. And the celebration of Milan. 
جشن میلاد مصطفیٰ ہے آ جشن میلاد مصطفیٰ ہے آ جوش پر رحمت خدا ہے آ جوش پر رحمت خدا ہے آ خسر عالم ہوا ہے نورانی خسر عالم ہوا ہے نورانی ظلمت کفر مٹ گیا ہے آج ظلمت کفر مٹ گیا ہے آج آسماں انہی کے قدموں پر آسماں پر انہی کے قدموں سے شرف عرش بڑھ گیا ہے آد شرف عرش بڑھ گیا ہے آج آسماں کیا ہے عرش آلہ سے آسماں کیا ہے عرش آلہ سے ردبہ فرش بڑھ گیا ہے آج ردبہ عرش بڑھ گیا ہے آج بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں مدینے چلا میں مدینے چلا میں مدینے چلا میں مدینے چلا پھر کرم ہو گیا میں مدینے چلا پھر کرم ہو گیا میں مدینے چلا کیف سا چھا گیا میں مدینے چلا کیف سا چھا گیا میں مدینے چلا جھومتا جھومتا میں مدینے چلا جھومتا جھومتا میں مدینے چلا آنکھ تھمتے نہیں عشق جمتے نہیں آنکھ رکھ تھمتے نہیں عشق تھمتے نہیں لڑ کھڑاتا ہوا میں مدینے چلا لڑ کھڑاتا ہوا میں مدینے چلا 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 پھر کرم ہو گیا میں مدینے چلا روح مزتر ٹھہر تو نکلنا ادھر روح مزتر ٹھہر تو نکلنا ادھر اتنی جلدی ہے کیا میں مدینے چلا اتنی جلدی ہے کیا میں مدینے چلا 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 پھر کرم ہو گیا میں مدینے چلا ساکم اللہ خیرن الحمدللہ الحمدللہ اللہ حمد صلی اللہ سیدنا محمد بسم اللہ our next speaker is شیخ فراز خان شیخ فراز خان is on the faculty of زیدونہ college his specialty is in areas including اشعری and ماتوریبی theology, Hanif's, Hanifi jurisprudence, and logic. He has taught as an instructor at the Qasit Arabic Institute in Amman, Jordan, and also serves as a researcher and instructor for Seekers Hub Global. His education began with a bachelor's in biology from the University of Texas, Austin. Afterwards, Sheikh Faraz lived and studied in Amman, Jordan for several years while earning diplomas in traditional Islamic studies and classical Arabic. His new book has recently been released 
It's titled The Introduction to Islamic Theology. And it is a must-have, a must-read for anyone who wants to understand Islamic creed and theology in an increasingly atheistic world. You can go buy it at the Zituna bookstore. Go check out their website, inshallah. Bismillah. Sheikh Faraz Khan. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Nabi Lumi. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim tasliman kathira. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma wa hiya lana min amrina rashada. Wa sallillahumma ala Sayyidina Muhammad al Nabi Lumi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah. It's a great blessing to gather for the uh, remembrance of Allah. Ta'ala and the remembrance of his blessed prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one of the great inheritors of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam abu uthman al-hiyari rahimahullah he was a great imam who is from ray in persia and he moved to nisapur where he studied he spent his entire life studying and seeking to learn and implement the prophetic way and he he died in the year 298 after Hijrah, uh, the same year that Imam Junaid passed away. Passed away. Allah be pleased with them all. And in uh, Nisapur, uh, in, in his biography, Imam Dhahabi describes Abu Uthman al hayari as an eminent Imam. He says he is uh, al Imam, al Qudwa, uh, someone that was emulate, someone to be emulated or taken as an example. He was. He calls him Sheikh Al Islam, which is a title reserved for only the greatest of our ulama, generally speaking. He, uh, and he, uh, so he was once sitting with one of his companions, Abu Uthman Al Hayri, and he asked his student. He said, uh, "Alastum tarona an inda dhikr salihin tanzil al rahma." He says that do you not uh, hold the prince hold fast to the principle that when the righteous are mentioned, divine mercy descends. And the student said, of course, and Abu Uthman, rahimahullah, he says, فَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى سَيِّدْ الصَّالِحِينَ He says, in that case, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, is the liege lord. He is the uh, master of all the righteous. So if mentioning any righteous person is a means of mercy descending, then what about mentioning the best of creation, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that the, uh, the, ta the title for the Mawlid uh, this year is Triumph During Tribulation, the, the prophetic light, Triumph During tri Tribulation. Tribulation is very much the, what defines the context of the seerah that our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh underwent the most difficult of trials he was orphaned uh at birth losing his father before birth in fact he uh sallallahu alaihi wasallam his mother uh, he lost his mother amina at the age of 6 sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he went under the care of his grandfather abdul muttalib whom he lost at the age of eight, a couple years later, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he was brought under the care of Abu Talib and raised in his house, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He had seven children total in his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, six with uh, our spiritual mother, Lady Khadija, Radulahu Anha, uh, Qasim, and then uh, Zainab, uh, Ruqayya, Um Kulthum, and Fatima, Radulahu Anhum, and then Abdullah. And then he had a seventh child with Mari al Qubtiya Ibrahim. And that of the seven children, he lost six of them in his life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All except Lady Fatima, Radullahu Anha, that he buried with his own blessed hand, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was persecuted by his people, his own kinsmen, his own family, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was uh, ridiculed. He was fought against, uh, hostility was shown to him uh, all throughout the prophetic life, the Blessed Sira. We find tribulation after tribulation, trial after trial. And uh, of course, when he was asked what his most difficult time was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, he referred to 
uh, the year which in the books of Sirah is called Amul Huzn, the year of sadness. And in that year, he lost two uh, very close loved ones, Abu Talib, who was like a father figure for him, and who not only raised him, but was, his, was the means for his political protection in Mecca, that uh, despite the hostilities and ridicule directed against him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the Quraysh could not wage an all-out war. They could not actually uh, attack him fully or threaten his blessed life uh, while Abu Talib was alive. Why? Because of the tribal system of the Quraysh and Abu Talib being the head of his clan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he maintained that protection of him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, and, and on top of that, Abu Talib was like a father figure for him. In fact, when he was 12 years old, according to the hadith in which he traveled with Abu Talib to Syria and he met the monk Buhaira and Buhaira noticed signs of his prophethood and asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before he asked the prophet questions, he asked uh, Abu Talib, what is his relation with you? And Abu Talib says that he is my son. He is my son. Buhaira says that's impossible because the scriptures had that the, that the last prophet would be orphaned. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Abu Talib then admits, actually, he is my nephew. But the fact that he calls him my son, it shows that the intimate, the close relationship that they had. And Abu Talib lo loved him like a son, and in fact, more than his own children. And Abu Talib wrote a lot of poetry, very eloquent poetry that, in fact, Ibn Qayyim says is mo was more eloquent than the, the classics of Quraysh that were hanging on the Kaaba. Uh, those sort of, you know, legendary poetic works that were so great that they hung on the Kaaba. Abu Talib, his poetry was in fact arguably more eloquent than those, the Mu'allaqat, and he has tremendous love and praise for the Prophet in that poetry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he loses Abu Talib and along with the political protection afforded through that relationship. And then, of course, within a couple of days, he loses his beloved, blessed wife, companion, best friend, Lady Khadija, radiallahu anha. She is Wazira to Sitq. She is the minister of truth, minister of, uh, of, of you know, uh, genuine support for the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was, of course, the one uh, that Allah Ta'ala decreed that he would have most of his children, six of the seven, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She was in fact the one that Allah Ta'ala decreed that under her, uh, when, when, during their marriage, that wahi began. And in the famous hadith of the beginning of Revelation, Badr wahi that our mother Aisha describes, Allah be pleased with her, that, that when he came back from Hira after Revelation and the encounter with Gabriel, that she comforted him. So she has this maqam, this station, Allah be pleased with her, that kalla wallahi la yukhzikallahu abada. And she says that Allah will never, you know, uh, for, for, forsake you. That innaka la tasilu rahim wa taksibu al-ma'doom wa tu'inu ala nawab al-haq. And she, she mentions his virtues, that you are someone that you maintain, maintain kinship bonds and you help the people in need and you serve the poor, uh, etc. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was someone that, radiallahu anha, that he in fact said that Allah uh, gave, uh, provided me. It was provision from Allah that he loved her. Because uh, later in his life, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, he would st still think of her. He would send gifts to her friends. Sometimes when, he would, when they would slaughter a sheep, he would send part of that meat to the friends of Khadija, thinking about her, radiallahu anha. And he told our mother Aisha, Inni, in Sahih Muslim, the hadith, Inni qad ruziqtu hubbaha, that I, Allah Ta'ala has given me the provision of love of Khadija. And her rank is so great, she's the best of women, that, uh, of course, uh, Gabriel came once in the hadith in Bukhari in Muslim, that Jibreel alayhi salam came and said, Khadija's on her way with a pot of stew and meat and some drink. And when she comes, Right, فَأَقْرِئْهَا عَلَيْهَا uh, السَّلَامِ مِنْ رَبِّهَا وَمِنِّي أو كما قال, That convey to her salam from her Lord and from me, Jibreel alayhi salam. وَبَشِّرْهَا And give her tidings of bait in 
fil jannah of a of a house in paradise min qasab from from reeds laysa fihi sakhab wala nasab in which there is no uh, raising of voices there's no shouting and there's no exhaustion and fatigue and some of the ulama mentioned that uh, uh, of the wisdoms of this description that, that the, her home in paradise has no shouting and no fatigue or exhaustion because not once in their marriage did she raise her voice to the Prophet Sallallahu and not once in their marriage did she uh, annoy him in any way or cause him fatigue, cause him frustration Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the perfection of their relationship, the perfection of her being a blessed wife. And what is to say of her rank? That Allah Ta'ala Himself sends salam to her. SubhanAllah. That Jibreel alayhi salam, when he came with the salam, it wasn't simply from Jibreel. It wasn't simply from him. He says, convey to her, O Allah's Messenger, convey to her salam from her Lord and then from me. And so what is the rank of Lady Khadija Radu Anha? The Prophet loses her in the year of sadness, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, of course, when he makes his da'wah to Ta'if, he goes to the neighboring city of Ta'if and he preaches and invites them to Islam. And in addition, he's seeking support so that he can continue his preaching in Mecca, that the, perhaps they might afford him the political support now that Abu Talib had passed, and we know the story is well known that uh, the leaders of Ta'if mocked him. They were uh, they were rude and uh, and and they ridiculed him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They were sarcastic with him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they said vile things. And then later, when he continued making da'wah to the others, the 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 the, the public of Ta'if, then the the they uh, sort of riled up the people and they got the sufaha, the, the foolish and the ignorant to be uh, host hostile to him and they made two rows and they got the, uh, the, the servants and the children, the slaves and the children to throw stones at him وسلم, and in one riwayah Zayd ibn Haritha was with him عنه, and trying to shield with his body, trying to shield the Prophet from the, from the harm وسلم, but despite that, that he was pelted so much, and, and when he would, uh, sometimes he, in, the in the description in the Sira, his blessed body, he would go to the ground because of it, it was so much, and that they would lift him by his arms and push him forward, وسلم, to the extent that there was uh, bl blood, his blessed blood uh, on his blessed legs. And so this is the most difficult time, uh, the, most, the most intense tribulation for him. What does he do? He turns to Allah Ta'ala. He teaches us how to deal with our most difficult moments. He teaches us the adab, the proper etiquette of dealing with hardship, dealing with constriction, dealing with abuse is firstly to direct ourselves to Allah Ta'ala. And he makes the famous dua, one of the most beautiful duas in the sunnah and in the seerah that he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam allahumma ilayka ashku da'fa quwwati wa qillati hilati wa hawani ala nas oh allah to you alone do i complain of the, my my weakness and the my lack of resources and the abuse i'm facing by the 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 abuse of, and and humiliation that people are directing towards me uh, and that Ya Arhamar Rahimin, O oh, most merciful of those who show mercy, Anta Rabbul Mustadafin, you are the Lord of the weak, the disenfranchised, Wa Anta Rabbi, and you are my Lord. That manifesting his servanthood, direct servanthood to Allah, turning to Allah, you are my Lord. And by implication that he is manifesting that he is the Abd, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the servant of Allah. Anta Rabbi, Anta Rabbul Mustadafin wa Anta Rabbi ila man takiluni to whom will you entrust me ila ba'idin yatajahamuni to some far off person that will abuse me you know Ta'if was not his family 
His family is Quraysh. He had to go outside to a different city. Ila ba'id into some far off person, a stranger, not, not a familiar, not a relative, not one of the Quraysh, to, to one of the Banu Thaqif of Ta'if, to, to Ila ba'id, and yet the Jahamuni who's gonna, who's gonna just abuse me. O ila qareebin malaktahu amri, or to a, to a near person, a close person, a relative, to whom you have given them control over my affair. Malaktahu amri, who, who has, uh, control of, of my situation. In lam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali. In any case, so long as your anger is not on me, O oh Allah, so long as your anger is not on me, fala ubali. I don't mind. I don't mind. This was his concern. That is this a, a manifestation that Allah Ta'ala is upset with me? Or is this simply a test that is an expression of Allah's love? And of course, for, his, for him, sallallahu alayhi wa everything that happened was an expression of the intimate love of Allah for him. That he is Habibullah, sallallahu alayhi wa But this is something for us to have introspection of, is look at the etiquette, is that if we're faced with a circumstance that leaves us straightened and constricted, that we go back to Allah in servitude and we ask Allah and we also ask ourselves that is this a, is this a sign that Allah Ta'ala is upset with me or is this a raising of my ranks? How do we tell? We make tawbah. We, we, we ask ourselves, am I involved in something? Am I persisting in something that is displeasing to Allah Ta'ala? And also a way for us to gauge, a way for us to uh, measure or have an indication of why the test is coming, whether as an expression of Allah's wrath, God forbid, or Allah's pleasure and love, is how is our response during it? Do we have the patience and fortitude and the contentment with Allah and His decree, which would indicate, as Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, rahimahullah, he said, if, if a person has patience and is content with Allah's decree, that's a sign that the test is coming from Allah's pleasure and love. But if a person is ha lacking patience and falling apart and, and, and not having fortitude, it's a sign that the test itself is from the displeasure of Allah, God forbid. And so back to the dua then he says, In lam yakun bika alayya ghadabun fala ubali. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As long as you're not angry with me, I don't mind. But then what does he say? Walakin aafiyatuka hiya aw sa'uli. However, well-being Safety, security, afia from you, O Sauli, it gives me more room. It's 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 wider for me. And subhanallah. And in the hadith, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the in the other hadith, he says, the best du'a to make, to the best thing to ask Allah Taala for after yaqeen, after certitude, is afia and muafa, well-being, health, safety, security. Afia encompasses all good in terms of one's one's life and livelihood. And so he says, he, he says, as long as you're not angry, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as long as you're not angry, I don't mind, but your afia is easier for me. It gives me more room. And then what does he say? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this connects, you know, the title of, of the Mawlid that the Prophet's light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, triumph during tribulation. Because his light, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is a mirror and expression of the light of Allah Ta'ala. Allahu nurus samawati wal ard. Allah is the light and the source of all light in the heavens and the earth. And so what does he say next? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. A'udhu bi nuri wajhika alladhi ashraqat lahu dhulumat wa saluha alayhi amru dunya wal akhira. I seek refuge and protection in the light of your countenance, the light of the waj of Allah. And in our theology, wajhuhu, thatuhu, the, the, the countenance of Allah is the very being, the very entity of Allah. Wadatuhu wujuduhu, and his entity is his very being, Jalla Thanauhu, capital B, being, the necessary being of Allah Ta'ala. And so he, he says, I see, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I seek refuge in the light of your countenance, the light of your very being that illuminates all darknesses. 
and by which all affairs of this life and the next are made right. This is the Islamic answer to the problem of evil and suffering. The philosophical problem of evil and suffering, the answer to that is, is in this prophetic moment and in all the moments of the Prophet ﷺ, but explicitly in this dua, in this supplication, because it's the light of Allah that removes all darknesses. In other words, if we recognize that Allah Ta'ala is behind, is the, is, is the one governing all of our tribulations, is the one governing, is the, is the owner and master of every moment of existence, that Allah Ta'ala has decreed everything eternally, recognizing that is recognizing nur samawati wal ard the the light of the heavens and earth and so ashqa lahu dhulumat so the dhulumat the darknesses of our tough times and our constrictions and our moments of 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 anxiety and depression and the trauma that we face that those darknesses are illuminated by nur samawati wal ard allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself and so tawakkul you know trusting relying on Allah, relying on the illuminator and the light of the heavens and earth lit, lights up the darknesses. It, it, it shows the light of the dark, behind the darkness. So he says this, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مِنْ أَنْ يَنْزِلْ بِي غَدَبُكْ أَوْ يَحِلَّ عَلَيَّ سَخَطُكْ لَكَ الْعُتْبَ حَتَّى تَرْضَى That I seek your refuge in your light, O Allah, lest your anger or wrath descend upon me you have the right you have the right to blame as long as you're pleased you have the right to blame and censure as long as you're pleased wala hawla wala quwwata illa bik and there's no strength there's no power except with you this is the light this is the the what is the light of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at heart right um, uh, you know of the most salient uh, virtues of his light sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his perf perfect the perfection of his slavehood the perfection of his servitude, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and al iftiqaru ila Allah, expressing our need for Allah, expressing for the servant to express his need for Allah Taala. This is what the Prophet does, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is what he teaches us. One of the contemporaries of Imam Junaid, Abu Bakr al Kitani, he said, "Man ida saha al iftiqaru ila Allah, saha al ghina bihi." If the if one's need for Allah is authentic and real, then one's enrichment through Allah will be authentic and real. That, that the, the darkness of our circumstance is illuminated when we go to Allah with need, when we express our absolute intrinsic need for Allah. فَاقَتُكَ لَكَ ذَاتِيَةٌ Ibn Atta'ila says, your need for Allah is intrinsic to what you are, is intrinsic to who you are. It never leaves us. And when tribulations occur, they are but reminders of what we forget, that we need Allah in every moment. This is why the adab of the righteous is that even in the comfort of their homes, when they make dua, they make dua as if they're drowning. They make dua as if they're drowning, even in the comfort of their homes. Because... Our reality is we're always drowning. We're always in need of Allah Ta'ala. And so that Al-Iftiqaru ila Allah. This is the light of servitude that the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In the hadith of Tirmidhi, the Prophet taught us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna idham al-jaza ma'a idham al-bala. The greatness, the magnitude of the reward is commensurate with the magnitude of the tribulation. The greater the tribulation, the greater the reward from Allah Ta'ala. And then he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa inna Allah Ta'ala idha ahabba qawman ibtalahum. And verily Allah, Most High, when He loves a people, He tests them. When He loves a people, He tests them. There's so much tribulation happening in the Ummah right now. It's a sign that Allah loves this Ummah. Because this is the Ummah of Habibullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So insofar as we are the ummah of the beloved of Allah, we are the ummah that is beloved to Allah, so long as we adhere to his way, so long as we emulate him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So whoever 
And again, this is how we know why the test is happening. It's about our response. So whoever, فَمَنْ رَضِيَ Whoever has rida, whoever is content and satisfied with Allah, فَلَهُ rida. They shall receive the divine satisfaction and the divine good pleasure. وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السُّخْتْ But whoever is angry and frustrated at Allah, God forbid, then they receive the same from Allah Ta'ala. And so, approximating rida, always seeking to increase in our contentment with Allah Ta'ala. What is the means by which we increase in our rida? Abu Uthman al-Hayri, the same Imam we began with today, one of his teachings, Rahimullah Ta'ala, and he was an eminent Imam, Hakim, the great Hadith master of Nisapur at his time, he said, لم يختلف مشايخنا أن أبا أثمان مجاب الدعوة He said, uh, none of our teachers, none of the sheikhs of, of Nisapur had a difference of opinion. They were in consensus and agreement that Abu Uthman al hayri was someone who was mujab al dawa that his dua was always answered immediately. And uh, Imam Dhahabi says Abu Uthman al hayri was for the, for the people of Khurasan, of Persia, like Imam Junaid was for the people of Iraq. He was at the level of Imam Junaid. That Abu Uthman, what did he say? Radulanu, he says, A tafweed muqaddimatu rida. A tafweed raddu ma jahilta ila alimihi. He says, tafweed is to give back to Allah what you don't understand. It's to return back to Allah, to consign to Allah what you don't understand. Wa ufawdu amri ila Allah. I consign my affair to Allah. I don't understand why this is happening. Wa ufawdu amri ila Allah. I consign my affair to Allah. And he says then, wa tafweed muqaddimatu rida. And tafweed is the precursor to rida. It is the uh, means by which we can attain unto true contentment with Allah Ta'ala and His decree. And then he says, Abu Uthman, rahimahullah, wa rida babu Allah al-Azam. And contentment and satisfaction with Allah is the greatest door to Allah. Is the, the great, greatest door to Allah Ta'ala. And so the, what did the Prophet say in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the authentic hadith, Ajaban lil mu'min. How amazing is the true believer? La yaqdi Allahu lahu shay'an illa kana khayran lah. Allah Ta'ala does not decree anything for the believer except that it's good for him. Ajaban lil mu'min. لا يقضي الله له شيئا إلا كان خيرا له. Allah Taala, how wondrous and amazing is the believer. Allah decrees nothing for him save that it is good for him. And in other hadith of Muslim Imam Ahmad, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was counseling one of his companions that had a, a a defect, something with his gait, the way he walked was a problem, and the Prophet was counseling him, and he said, but I have this. Uh, this uh, disability, which is why he and and the prophet insisted that he he took his counsel of of had to do with his dress, his his garment, and then what what does he say? Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, fa inna kulla khalq Allah, fa inna fa inna kulla khalq Allah azza wa jal hasan, fa inna kulla khalq Allah azza wa jal azza wa jal hasan. He says, do it anyways, even if your 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 disability will be more manifest, because why? Because everything in the creation of Allah is beautiful. Everything in the creation of Allah is Hasan. And th this is one of the secrets of the light of the Prophet ﷺ, is that this is how he saw the world. Even in the year of sadness, even with the loss of his, of his loved ones, Abu Talib and Khadija, anha, even with the circumstances at Ta'if, his vantage وسلم, is always Husn, the beauty, right? The beauty of Allah, because the beauty is the beauty of Allah. And what did he name his grandchildren? Hassan and Hussein, from the same root. And Imam Hussein ibn Ali, radiallahu anhum, what did he say with respect to dealing with tribulations to manifest the beauty in 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 in, in located in his blessed name, Hussein? Like his brother Hassan, Ali Musalam, what does he say? Man i'tamada ala husni ikhtiyar illahi lahu, lam yataman, lam yataman, 
غیر مختار اللہ له سبحان اللہ من اعتمد على حسن اختیار اللہ له لم يتمنى غیر مختار اللہ له He says whoever relies on the beautiful choice of Allah Ta'ala for him he will, he will not desire anything other than what Allah chose for him Whoever trusts and relies on the beautiful selection of Allah for him he will not desire anything other than what Allah Ta'ala chose for him and so the, the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu his blessed light is a perfect reflection of the Fatiha itself which begins after the Basmala Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen whatever our circumstances whatever we're facing the good times the bad times the times of joy and elation the times uh, of the times of joy the times of elate, elatedness elation or the times of constriction depression sadness pain what rings true and what should be reverberating echoing in our hearts and on our tongues is alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin whatever pain whatever difficulty we experience all praise belongs to allah lord of all the worlds nur as samawati wal ard we ask allah ta'ala to make his people who manifest these teachings who reflect this beautiful light of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our own character and behavior inwardly and outwardly and that uh, that allah ta'ala relieve our difficulties and the difficulties of the ummah walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh ahlan wa sahlan welcome back welcome back to our annual tri valley celebration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We want to thank San Ramon Valley Islamic Center for hosting us this year. We also want to thank, also want to thank the Muslim Community Center at East Bay and the Islamic Center of Livermore for helping us put this together. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, we're going to continue our program and we're going to continue with the recitation of Surah Mulk, which is traditionally recited after Isha prayer by our Hafiz, our Qadi, Qadi Amr al may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and bless and protect his family. Qadi Amr was raised in Morocco and he memorized the Quran at age 17. He has ijazah for the hafs and wash forms of Quranic recitation. In 1994 and 1995, he was awarded top prizes in the National Moroccan Tajweed competition. He is recognized for the beauty, clarity, and excellence of his recitation and is one of the Bay Area's foremost Quranic teachers, mashallah. Mashallah, none of my teachers like it when I introduce them, but I have to as MC. Forgive me. Alhamdulillah, also, Qari Amr, mashallah, I have a personal connection with him when he first came to the San Francisco Bay Area in the early 2000s. Alhamdulillah, he taught me and my friends put on at our house. And mashallah, an entire generation of youth was raised to love the Quran by Qari Amr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his efforts, and many of the students have gone on to memorize the Quran. Mashallah, <laughs> تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أحسن عملا وهو العزيز الغفور الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور ثم ارجع البصر كرة 
الحسين ينقلب إليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير ولقد زين السماء صابيح وجعلنا رجوما للشياطين وأعتدنا لهم على السعير وللذين كفروا برب بهم عذاب جهنم وبيس المصير إذا ألقوا فيها سمعوا لها شهيقا وهي تفور تكاد تميز من الغيظ كلما ألقي فيها فوج سألهم خزنتها ألم ياتكم نذير قالوا بلى قد جاءنا نذير فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء فكذبنا وقلنا ما نزل الله من شيء إن أنتم إلا في ضلال كبير وقالوا لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل ما كنا في أصحاب السعير فاعترفوا بذنبهم فسحر قل لأصحاب السعير إن الذين يخشون ربهم بالغيب لهم مغفرة وأجر كبير وأسر قولكم أو اجهروا به إنه عليم بذات الصدور ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير هو الذي جعل لكم الأرض دلولا فامشوا في مناكبها وكلوا من رزقه وإليه النشور سماء يحسب 
فَبِكُمُ الْأَرْضَ فَإِذَا هِيَ تَمُورُ فَمَا مِنْتُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ يرسل عليكم حاصبا فستعلمون كيف نذير ولقد كذب الذين من قبلهم فكيف كان نكير أولم يروا إلى الطير فوقهم صافات ويقبضن ما يمسكهن Yeah. <laughs> 
Alhamdulillah, many things stopped during COVID, but love did not stop. Loving our Prophet did not stop, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of God and the beloved of our hearts. One of, uh, when I came today, I had a very difficult moment resisting to hug Ustaz Ali Atai. It was one of the hardest moments in these seven months of COVID not being able to hug Ustaz Ali Atai. May Allah bless him and all of our teachers. Say Ameen. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Ya Rabbi salli alayhi wa sallim. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Habibi kashafi al-Mushafa. Ya Rabbi salli ala Muhammad. Habibi kashafi al-Mushafa. Ya Rabbi salli ala على محمد على الورى رجبة الورفاء يا ربي صلي على محمد على الورى رجبة الورفاء يا ربي صلي على محمد اسم البرايا جهن وأوسع يا ربي صلي على محمد اسم البرايا جهن وأوسع يا ربي صلي على محمد واسلك في دارك خير مهيا يا ربي صل عليه محمد واسلك في دارك خير مهيا يا ربي صل على محمد وعفي لا واشفق ولا موجا يا ربي صل على محمد وعفي لا واشفق ولا موجا يا ربي صل على محمد واصلح القلب واقوى الفاية يا ربي صل على محمد واصلح القلب واقوى الفاية يا ربي 
صلي على محمد وكل مهاجر وصله ولا يا رب صلي على محمد وكل مهاجر وصله ولا يا رب صلي على محمد نهل بحسنك الممنع يا رب صلي على محمد نهل في حسنك الممنع يا رب صل على محمد رب ارفع عنا بضاك العرفاع يا رب صل على محمد رب عنا بضاك العرفاع يا رب صل على محمد واجعل لنا في الجنان مجمع يا رب صل على محمد واجعل لنا في الجنان مجمع يا رب صل على محمد رافق بنا خير قلبك جمع يا رب صل على محمد رافق بنا خير قلبك جمع يا رب صل على محمد يا رب صل عليه وسلم يا رب صل على محمد يا رب صل عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم انا فتحنا لك فتحا مبينا ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما صلى الله عليه وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا لقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف رحيم يا رحيم فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله فإن تولوا فقل حسبي الله لا إله إلا هو عليه توكلت عليه توكلت وهو رب العرش العظيم يا عظيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أدانا بعبده المختار من دعانا إليه بالإذن وقد نادانا لبيك يا من دلنا وحدانا صلى الله عليه صلى عليك الله باريك الذي بك يا مشفع خصنا وحبانا صلى الله عليه باريك الأطهار مادن سرك الأسماء فهم سبن النجاة حما وعلى صحابتك الكرام حماة دينك أصبحوا لولائه عنوانا والتابعين لهم بصدق ما حدا حاد المودة هيا جل سجانا والله ما ذكر الحبيب لدى المحب إلا وأضحى والهن شوانا صلى الله عليه أين المحبون الذين عليهم بدل 
فاحتاجت الأرواح تشتاق اللقاء وتحن تسأل رب الرضوان آل المحبين كذا فاسمع إلى سير المشفع والرف الأذان وانصت إلى أوصاف طه المجتبى واحضر لقلبك يمتلئ وجدانا يا رب لا صلي وسلم دائما على حبيبك من إليك دعنا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على وعلى آله محمد أشرف الأعراب والعجب محمد خير من يمشي على قدم محمد بازغ المعروف جامعه محمد صاحب الإحسان وال كرامي مولاي صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله بمحمد تاج رسل الله قائبة محمد سالب الأقوال والكاذب محمد تابج الميثاق حافظه محمد طيب الأخلاق والشيام مولاي صل وسلم دائما Thank you. 
على حبيبك من إليك دعانا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله صلوا على الحبيب صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد سبسي على أولى همارا نبي سبسي بالا اوالا ہمارا نبی اپنے مولا کا پیارا ہمارا نبی اپنے مولا کا پیارا ہمارا نبی دون عالم کا دولہ ہمارا نبی اللہم صلی علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد اللہم صلی علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد حضر رب العلا اور کیا چاہیے مل گئے مصطفیٰ اور کیا چاہیے حضر رب العلا اور کیا چاہیے مل گئے مصطفیٰ اور کیا چاہیے دامن مصطفیٰ جن کی ہاتھوں میں ہے انہیں روز جزا اور کیا چاہیے ہم کو اپنی غلامی کی دے دے سند بس یہی عزت و مرتبہ چاہیے بھر کے جھولی میری میرے سر کار دے بھر کے جھولی میری میرے سر کار دے مسکرا کے کہا اور کیا چاہیے اللہم صلی علی سیدنا حسن تھا ان کا جلوہ نما انبار کا عالم کیا ہوگا جب حسن تھا ان کا جلوہ نما انبار کا عالم کیا ہوگا ہر کوئی پیدا ہے بن دیکھے ہر کوئی پیدا ہے بن دیکھے دیدار کا عالم کیا ہوگا اللہ سیدنا و مولانا محمد اللہم صل علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد مکچر بدر شاشانی مت چم کر لات نورانی کالی ظلف تیک مستانی مغمور اکھی ہنمت بڑیاں اس صورت کو میں جان اکھا جانا نہ تے جان جہان اکھا سچ آنکھا تیر اپنی میں شان اکھا جس شان کو شان سب بڑیاں سبحان اللہ ما اجمال کاما آحسن کا ماک مال کا کتے مہر علی کتے تیر سنا کتے مہر علی کتے تیر سنا گستاک کیا کتے جا لڑیا 
Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana Save him from his enemies. 
enemies Our envy clouds form from the seas That gave him cover from the heat Of a sun whose light could not compete This shine so bright that all was clear in blinding night. I am beside the streets that gaze upon its form completely blazed. Truth and kindness, charity From God who gave such clarity His mercy comes in one He said To mold our hearts more heaven As truth prevailed and falsehood fled And hope restored but to the death Salat With lilies, flowers, and life's rebirth In a dome of green, like his on earth Salatullah, salamullah Ala toha rasulillah Salatullah, salamullah Ala yaseen habibillah
اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله لما دنا وقت البروز لأحمد عن إذن من ما شاه قد كان أغلت به الأم الأمينة بنت واد من لا أعلى الإله مكانا المختار عبد الله بن عبد اللي مطلب الرعى البرهانا بل كان يغمر نور طه وجهه وسرى إلى الابن المصون عيانا وهو ابن هاشم الكريم الشهم بن عبد ملاف بن قصي كان والده يدعى حكيما شأنه قد اعتلى أعزيز بذلك شانا وصل المصطفى حتى ترى في سلسلات اصوله عدنانا فهناك قف واعلم برفعه الى اسماعيل كان للابي معوانا وحينما حملت به امنة لم تشك شيئا ياخذ النسوان اللطف من رب السماء فصل هذا والهم والاحزان وكما قد جاء ما علمت به ان المهيمن شرف الاكوان بالطهر من في بطنها فاستبشرت ودنا المخاض فأترعت رضوانا سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم بكل لغضة أبدا عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزنة عرشه ومداد كلمات وجلة الأنوار وتجلت وتجلت الأنوار من كل الجهات فوقت ميلاد المشفع حانا كل من نفت نفزت شمس الهدى ظهر الحبيب مكرما ومصانا صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم الله يا نبي سلام عليك يا رسول سلام عليك يا حبيب سلام عليك من صلى سلام عليك صلوات الله عليك الله أبرز الله مشافى صاحب القدر مرافى فملان دون النواجي أما كل Oh, no.
Ya Allah, 
بعد المشفى يا الله صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وسطنا يا رب غفنا بها يا هطال يا ما صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم واختم العمر بحسن وصل العبا ومرجع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والصلاة الله تغشى بل له الحسن تجمع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أحمد الطغى وآله والصحابة ما السلاشع صلى الله على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم طلع البدر علينا من ثانيات الوداع وجاب الشكر علينا بدعا للحديد طلع البدر Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept. Amen. May Allah accept. We're very lucky to know the name of our beloved, the Messenger of God. It's a very special time. We're in a very special place in a very special month. Alhamdulillah, we're surrounded. One of the sweetness of this faith is through teachers. And if we don't know teachers, then it's, it's difficult to taste the sweetness of this faith, of Islam. Alhamdulillah, even Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent Jibreel, Gabriel, alayhi salam. 
even though Sayyidina Muhammad was sent, all of us, all of us, he's our teacher. Sayyidina Muhammad, he was sent as a teacher and he's our teacher and he has inheritors. And those inheritors, we keep close to us. Without, without those teachers, without those inheritors, it becomes very difficult. It becomes very difficult to taste the sweetness of this faith. And so in this next moment, we would like to, we would like to benefit from the presence of our teachers. And alhamdulillah, we have with us one of our special beloveds, Ustaz Ali Atai. I can describe him, I can attempt to describe him as a boulder, uh, but even that falls short of what he represents and of who he is. He's a man of truth. He's a man of God, inshallah. May Allah bless him and, and bless his family, inshallah. And may he always have the courage uh, to speak the truth and to speak and to speak in a manner that pleases God, inshallah. Always with increasing wisdom. May Allah bless him and his family. Everyone say, Ameen. 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 And now we invite Ustaz Ali Atai to share a few words with us, inshallah. Salaam alaikum wa rahim. Wa sallallahu wa sallam Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi jma'in. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. Blessed day. It's a blessed month. When we can gather and speak of the Messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'll keep it short, inshallah ta'ala. A few things I want to mention is that um, the title of this mode is Triumph and Tribulation. As Sheikh Faraz has mentioned already, the life of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is fraught with tribulations. And he's a great teacher. He, was, he said, I was only sent as a teacher, teaching us how to deal with these problems. And um, one of the, uh, the, the culmination of, of uh, uh, tribulations was his hijrah. Uh, to Medina to Manawara. And when he entered into the city of Medina, the Prophet وسلم, he was expected uh, by the, the Ansar as well as the Jews in the city, Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu anhu, who at the time was had some training as a rabbi, ethnically Jewish, later became Muslim. He said, Arafu anna wajshahu laysa bi wajshi kathab. He said, I can tell, and, and Arafah means to recognize, right? To recognition. I can I recognize that his face was not the face uh, of a liar. Uh, and then the Prophet Sallallahu he made his initial statement, Ya ayyuhal nas, afshu salama, wa ad'imu ta'ama, wa silu al-arhama, wa salu bil-layl, wa nasu niyam, tadkhul al-jannah tabi salam. And that was recorded by Abdullah ibn Salam. And so here the Prophet وسلم, is moving out of his, what some of the ulama refer to as a Christic phase or an Isawi phase. In other words, the Prophet وسلم, in Mecca resembled the Isa السلام, He was assertively nonviolent. He did not uh, retaliate for any personal injury towards him. And this, and this was also in the Madani period as well, when he entered into his mosaic or Musawi phase. In Mecca, the Mushrikeen, they would um, lampoon him, they'd make fun of him, they, they call him the opposite of Muhammad. And the Prophet وسلم, the way he dealt with that is, as one of my teachers said, he did not give it any reality. He just said, who, who is that? I'm Muhammad. What are they saying? They're saying something else. That's not me. What are these fools talking about? Right? And there were people in Medina to Munawwara uh, that there were mushrikeen in Medina that later became munafiqeen after the Battle of Badr. But when the Prophet ﷺ was coming into Medina, some of the mushrikeen paid their best poet, Hassan ibn Thabit, and they said to him, when you see him, pick some feature that he has and make fun of him, lampoon him, ridicule him, and let us recite this poetry for as long as as long as he's here, let's make fun of him, right? So Hassan ibn Thabit, he climbs a small hill and he sees the Prophet وسلم, going by. And according to the story, he looks at the Prophet وسلم, is one glance at the Prophet وسلم, one glance at the 
spectacle of creation that is passing by him. And he goes back to the mushrikeen because they paid him some money. He said, I don't need your money anymore. Here you go. I don't need it. He said, let's hear what you wrote. And he said, Lamma ra'aytu anwarahu sata'at. He said, when I saw his lights approaching, وَدَعْتُ مِنْ خِيْفَةِ كَفِّ عَلَى بَصَرِي He says, I had to cover my eyesight with my hand because of the, the blinding lights. خَوْفًا عَلَى بَصَرِي مِنْ حُسْنِ سُورَتِي Out of fear of losing my eyesight due to the beauty of his countenance, فَلَسْتُ أَنْذُرُهُ إِلَّا عَلَى قَدْرِي I could barely, I could scarcely look at him. رُوحٌ مِنَ النُورِ فِي جِسْمٍ مِنَ القمري. A, a, a soul from light, a body that looks like the moon, the full moon. Like a mantle stitched together with brilliant stars. Muhammadun Basharun Bashari. He is a human being, but he's not like other human beings. That uh, he's, uh, you know, other people are like stones, but he's, he's like a precious jewel. So he's still from the genus of stone, as it were, but he's with the earth, or human being. He's a very special human being. And then the Prophet ﷺ in Medina, and he was a peacemaker. Okay? Here's the thing is that the Qur'an is our primary text, and it's very hard for the shayateen to attack the Qur'an because the message of the Qur'an is very clear. They go to hadith, they go to weak hadith, they go to uh, solitary transmission, they go to sira literature. Okay, the, the, the mass transmitted normative agreed upon ethos of the Prophet is taken primarily from the Quran. And if there are solitary transmissions that run counter to that, okay, then we take the Quran and we take the mass transmitted sunnah over solitary transmissions. So what does the Quran say about the Prophet ﷺ? It says that he was a peacemaker. And this, this ayah of the Qur'an is ajeeb, and I quote it a lot in many, many different contexts. Hold fast to the rope of Allah, and don't be divided amongst yourselves. Don't be divided. In Habalullah, according to the sound hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Habalullah is kitabullah al-mateen, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً And remember the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You were enemies. Humanity. In the first instance, the Aus and the Khazraj, who would become the Ansar, Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, he says they were fighting blood feuds for 120 years. And he says, إِلَا أَنْ أَتْفَأُ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ Islam Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extinguished that with Islam. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَى حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made ta'leef, he brought your hearts together, he united your hearts by means of his ni'mah. Imam al-Baydawi, he says, أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ بِرَسُولِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَا آلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ The ni'mah, the great ni'mah through which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala united the hearts was through his Habib صلى الله عليه وَلَا آلِهِ وَسَلَّمْ And you were on the brink of the fire and he saved you from it. And the Prophet وسلم, in Medina to Manawara, in the hadith literature, hadith that's in the Mustadrak of Imam al Hakim, Imam al Bayhaqi also records the hadith. He performed his own aqiqah in Medina. And Imam Suyuti says in his fatwa and his fatawa that this was to celebrate his mawlid. The Prophet وسلم, celebrated his mawlid. This is the opinion of Jalaluddin al Suyuti, who was a great, great scholar. Right? In the Sahihain, why are you fasting? We know the hadith. That This is the day in which I was born. And the day in which the Quran was revealed to me. In the Sunan of Imam al Nasai, a sound hadith from uh, Abu Sa'id al Khudri, he says that Mu'awiyah, radiallahu anhu, he says that the Prophet. One time came and he saw his sahaba in a halqa, sitting in a halqa. And he said, Ma 
ما أجلس ما أجلس ما أجلسكم. Why are you sitting in the circle? What has brought you out here? Why are you sitting in this majlis? And they responded to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They said, "Nadu Allah, huh? Nadu Allah, wa." He said, "We're calling on Allah subhanahu wa taala, wa nahmaduhu ala ma hadana lil Islam, wa manna alayna bika." He said, uh, they said to him, uh, to, uh, we are calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is what we're doing here. And we're, uh, we're uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to Islam. Okay. And, for, and the blessing of you. And the blessing of you, Ya Rasulullah. Right. So what are the Sahaba doing? What we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing, right? And then the Prophet sallallahu he said, I'm not asking you to rebuke you. Read the entire hadith. He said, I'm asking you because I was informed that inna Allah ta'ala yubahi bikum al-mala'ika. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is boasting to the angels about you right now because of what you're doing. So what were the Sahaba doing? They were sitting around, they were supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Huh? And they were recounting the blessing of, of, of Allah sending them the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So celebration of mawlid is indispensable. Every Muslim has to celebrate the mawlid. In other words, every Muslim has to be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa If you're not happy that Allah sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa then there's something wrong with your aqidah. That's an aqidah issue. On the day in which you do that, that's a fiqh issue. That's not an aqidah issue. You do it one day, today, in the masjid, somewhere else, that's, that's not an aqidah issue. But, but expressing joy for the birth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa this is something that is indispensable. This is, this is the hallmark of a Muslim. The Christians say, la ilaha illallah. I've heard them say, Arab Christians, Jews, they say that too. What makes the difference? They say, what, what makes the difference for us? Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammadur Rasulullah. He's the messenger of God, the final messenger of God. Okay. And in the names of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are indeed secrets. Like with the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. One of my teachers mentioned something interesting. He said, if you look at the name Allah, Allah, Right? That's the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take off the first letter, the alif, you have Lillahi, which means for God. Walillahi mashriqu wal maghrib. And if you take off the lamb here, lahu, lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al And if you take off the lamb here, you have hu, Allahu la ilaha illa hu. All of these have meaning, right? And then he said, he, he, he said, if you take the name Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and what does Muhammad mean, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It means the most praised, the one who is repetitively praised, the one who is intensively praised. Right? When you take off the meme, you have hamd. You have praise or hamid, because sometimes the dagger alif is not written in shorthand Arabic. When you take off the ha, you have mad or madad. Madad, spiritual nourishment. That we gain our spiritual nourishment through salah al nabi, through ittiba of the Prophet وسلم, adhering to the Sunnah, and then you take off uh, um, the next letter, and you have the ha, you have dal. You take the meme, and you have dal, dal. What does that dal la yudullu means? Is is signification, an indication, right? It's like the ulama say. Al-Mawjood of Al-Mushaf Dalla ala kitab illahi al-Nafsi wa al-Qadim. What we have Mawjood in the Mushaf, right? The sort of uh, modality of the Quran indicates upon the pre eternal, the pre eternal personal speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we have with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is an indication of the, of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in, a, in a perfect Adamic creature. Indications of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bil mu'mineen wa ra'ufur rahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
in the Quran to the believers, he is kind and merciful. These are two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Of course, it's not the same. Obviously, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he's the best of creation. Okay? And this is what it means to be the perfect human being. It is, it is to be the perfect, if you will, theomorphic manifestation of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the perfect human being, to be lordly in that sense, right? Not that, like what the Christians did, they took prophets and angels to be arbaba min dunillah, divine lords other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walakin kunu rabbaniyin, rather be lordly, be reflections, reflections of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the Prophet Sallallahu So we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to uh, give us um, tawfiq and to give us His forgiveness and to make this a means by which we approach Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. As Sheikh Farah said, Allah Nuru Samawati Wal Ard. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the light of the heavens and the earth. Imam Suyuti says the meaning of that is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the Source of all light in the heavens and the earth. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Mufassir al Quran, the one upon whom the Prophet وسلم, placed his blessed hand and said, Allahumma alimhu at ta'wil. O oh Allah, give him deep substantive knowledge of the Quran, deep knowledge of the exegesis of the Quran. He said, The meaning of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the guide of all creatures in the heavens and the earth. And then, Mathalu nurihi kamishkatin fiha misbah. There's an incredible, I mean, the Quran is an ocean of meaning. And everything you'll find in the Quran, like one of my teachers said that, he said, uh, he said um, there was a, uh, an Orientalist who attended a, 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 a dars, and, um, and the, 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 the sheikh, he said, he said, everything is in the Quran. Everything you need to know is in the Quran. And the Orientalist said, do you really believe that? And he said, naam. He said, yes, of course. And he's in the Orientals, he said, okay, if, if you have a sack of wheat, how many loaves of bread can you make from it? Is that in the Quran? And the Shaykh said, yes. He said, it is? Yes. Where is it? And the baker was in the class. He said, baker, how many loaves of bread can I make with one sack of wheat? He said, about 15 to 20. So there you go. Everything you need to know is in the Quran. Not necessarily everything in its minute details, but the methodology is there. Right? So in this ayah, ayatul nur, so there's, there's incredible meanings in the Quran. You know, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq, he said that the Quran has four levels of meaning, the expression, the illusions, the subtleties, the realities, and these are known by like the awam, and then you have the ulama, then you have you know, the anbiya, then you have meanings, meanings of the Quran, significations, ma'ani of the Quran that are only known by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But something that Abdullah ibn Abbas, he mentions, مَثَلُ نُورِهِ كَمِشْكَاتٍ فِيهَا مِسْبَاحِ Now we have the similitude, the parable of his light, a light that Allah owns. Ibn Abbas says, it is mentioned that this is a reference to the light of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi And the entire parable is a eulogy, a eulogy, a praising of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we need to engage in the Kitab Allah. We need to engage uh, in, uh, in the, the Sunnah, the mass transmitted Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. Um, and knowledge is something that, I mean, if you keep, we're running out of time, but if you get down to the uh, end of the ayah to Nur, Nurun ala Nur, Fakhradin al Razi and others, they say what that means is naqal in aqal. Right? The, the aqal, the intellect, the conscience, the word conscience is a Latin word, conscience, with knowledge, your fitrah, that you're born with certain truths that you know that are innate, that are natural. When that interacts with the naqal, the wahi, right? this produces illumination of the heart, just as uh, oil, which is the zayt, which is internal to the lamp, the misbah, and nar, the fire, which is external to it, when they interact, it illuminates the lamp. Naqal in aqal. This is our methodology. This is how we engage with the world. 
Right? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our, our deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our, our, our misdeeds and, and raise our ranks and give us Jannah and give us the, the uh, companionship of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wa sallam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa Bismillah, Jazakumullah khairan. Start of your day for that beautiful, beautiful reminder. Thank you so much. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We invite Kaya Umar to close us out with Dua, inshallah. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله ولقد أشرت لنعت من أوصافه تحيي القلوب تهيج الأشجان والله قد أثنى عليه فما يساوي القول منا أو يكون ثنانا لكن حبا في السرائر قد دعا لمديح صفوة ربنا وحدانا وإذا امتزجنا بالمودة ها هنا نرفع أيدي فقرنا ورجانا للواحد الأحد العلي إلهنا متوسلين بمن إليه دعانا مختاره وحبيبه وصفيه زين الوجود به الإله حبانا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا بالمصطفى قبلنا أجب دعوانا يا ربنا يا ربنا يا ربنا بالمصطفى قبلنا أجب دعوانا أنت لنا أنت لنا يا دخرنا في هذه الدنيا وفي أخرانا واصلح لنا الأحوال أصلح لنا الأحوال واغفر ذنبنا ولا تؤاخذ ربي إن أخطانا واسلك بنا في نهج طه المصطفى ثبت على قدم الحبيب خطانا يا الله أرنا بفضل منك طلعة أحمد في بهجة عين الرضا ترعانا واربط بي في كل حال حبلنا وحبال من ود ومن ولانا والمحسنين ومن أجاب نداءنا وذوي الحقوق وطالبا أوصانا والحاضرين وساعيا في جمعنا ها نحن بين يديك أنت ترانا ولقد رجوناك فحقق سؤلنا واسمع بفضلك يا سميع دعانا وانصر بنا سنة طاها في بقاع الأرض واقمع كل من عادانا وانظر إلينا واسقنا كأس الهنق 
واشف وعاف عاجلا مرضانا واشف وعاف عاجلا مرضانا واشف وعاف عاجلا مرضانا واقض لنا الحاجات واحسن ختمنا عند الممات واصلحا عقبانا يا رب يا ربي واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في ذلك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا ربي واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في ذلك الفردوس يا رجوانا يا ربي واجمعنا واحبابا لنا في ذلك الفردوس يا رجوانا بالمصطفى صل عليه وآله ما حركت ريح الصبا أوصانا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله وعلى أصحابه وأزواجه وذريته وأهل بيته وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا والحمد لله رب العالمين والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك ولعظيم سلطانك لك الحمد على الإيمان ولك الحمد على الإسلام ولك الحمد على نبي الرحمة سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم اجمع شمل المسلمين ووحد كلمتهم على الحق والدين اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وحب من يحبك وحب الفقراء والمشايخ والعلماء والمساكين وإذا أردت بعبادك فتنة فاقبضنا إليك غير مختونين ولا ضالين ولا مضلين ولا ظالمين ولا مظلومين ولا حاسدين ولا محسودين واجعلنا من عبادك وأوليائك الصالحين اصلح اللهم شأننا اصلح اللهم أولادنا وبناتنا ونساءنا ورجالنا ومجتمعنا بارك لنا فيما أعطيتنا وقنا عذاب بالنار. اللهم ارزقنا حب نبينا وارزقنا حسن اتباعه اللهم ارزقنا شفاعته يا رب العالمين واحشرنا معه يا أكرم الأكرمين وأردنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا اللهم بارك في إحبابنا الحاضرين والغائبين اللهم بارك فيهم وزدهم من فضلك ونورنا بنورك يا نور السماوات والأرض يا رب العالمين اللهم ارفع الوباء والبلاء عنا اللهم ارفع الوباء والبلاء عنا وعن المسلمين اللهم جنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اشف كل مريض اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين أجمعين وارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين نسألك اللهم حسن الخاتمة ونسألك العلا من الجنة ونسألك شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله 
عند الممات يا أرحم الراحمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد الفاتحة Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our Tri Valley Molded for 2020. This was a molded unlike any other, but like Sidi Mahdi mentioned, many things stopped in COVID 19, but love did not stop. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We wanted to thank our teachers, Sheikh Bin Arabi, Sheikh Ras Khan, and Dr. Asad Ali Atai for their time and their advice tonight. We wanted to thank our Mujahid, uh, Mahdi Amin, Amir Qadri. And we want to thank Marlon Adlan for his gumming. We want to thank Fadi Omar for his Quran recitation. We want to thank the Muslim Community Center of East Bay, the San Juan Valley Islamic Center, and the Islamic Center of Livermore for putting this together. And Tadi Flecter, I believe, for the last year. Thank you.